We shall now take a look at a flowchart to determine if an input number is a prime number or not. So examples of prime number are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 23 and so on. So we are going to use a very simple logic. First is I am going to read into a particular memory location called as num a number. Then starting from 2 till a particular point I am going to try to keep dividing this number. If it becomes divisible then this number cannot be a prime number else it's a prime number. Let me tell you what this dash is. Suppose I got a number like 25. What is the square root of 25? It is equal to 5. The last number I should check whether 25 is divisible to find out whether it's a prime number or not should be 5. So starting from 2 to the square root of that number I shall increase this one at a time. I will say for i is equal to 2 to square root of the number I shall keep checking one number at a time to see whether that number is divisible. Let me explain better. Let's take the input number as 25. Okay, number is 25. Then what I am going to do is I am going to start from i is equal to 2. 25, what is the square root of 25? It is 5. Alright, my number is 25, square root is 5. Initially i is 2. If I divide 25 by 2, the remainder happens to be 1. So I continue. I increase i by 1, i becomes 3. 25, if it is divisible by 3, okay, it becomes again the remainder is 1. Now I increase i by 1, i becomes 4, okay. 4, 5, 4, 6, 24. Again, the remainder is 1. Now, i at next point ends up becoming 5. So, when I take 25 and divide it by 5, the remainder happens to be 0. So, therefore, 25 cannot be a prime number. The logic is like this I'll take a number, I'll start dividing it from 2 all the way till square root of that number. In between, after division, if the remainder happens to be 0, then it is not possible for that number to be a prime number. Let's run through the flowchart and then we'll draw a table and try to analyze the particular problem. I'm going to read a number. So my first column is going to be number. Then I'm using a calculation in place of square root of num, I'm calling it as limit. Limit is equal to square root of num. Suppose number is 25, limit will be equal to 5. So limit is nothing but square root of the input number. Suppose I enter 100, square root of 100 is going to be 10. So limit will be 10. Now see what I am doing in the for loop. For starting for i equal to 2 to limit. So we'll have to keep track of the value of i also. And we will keep track of limit also. Alright. What we are going to do? We are going to check whether the number divided by i if it is equal to 0 or not. If it is True, if it becomes divisible, then I say it is not prime and I stop. Okay, I come here and stop. But I cannot just test one number and find whether it's divisible by that number and say prime or not. I need to keep continuing or looping through this process starting from 2 till the limit or square root of that particular number. Finally, if I say let's take a number like 29. The last number which can divide 29 theoretically is square root of 29 is approximately 6. Okay, I'm not saying 5 point something, approximately 6. So 29 is not divisible by 6, so automatically the limit is 6. After the limit hits here, it will come out and it will print 29 as a prime number and it will stop. In order to understand this, the best way to is go about running it through a set of numbers. So let's go one step at a time running it through numbers and then you should have a fair idea. Let's assume the input number is 31. Alright. Limit is equal to square root of the number. What is 31? Square root of 31 is approximately 6. Okay. Now I start with i is equal to 2. 
31 divided by 2, the remainder is 1. So this condition fails, it is false. I go back here. I becomes 3. 31 divided by 3 again here. The remainder is 1. I go back here. I becomes 4. So 4 is still less than or equal to the limit which happens to be 6. 31 divided by 4 is the remainder 0? No, it is the remainder happens to be 3 because 7 into 4 is 28. Okay, so remainder is 3. Now i is again increased. i becomes 5. i is 5. It is still less than or equal to 6. 31 by 5, the remainder is 1. I still, this condition is false. I go back here. Just see how this dot and all are connected here. Then what happens is i now ends up becoming 6. 6 is still equal to 6. 31 divided by 6 equal to 0 is still false. So automatically i is 7. It comes down here and it says 31 is prime and stops. Now let's take another number where it, it will get divided and it will not turn out to be a prime. Let us say we take the number 77. All right, let's take a number. Let's take a number 70. This is number. This is I and this is limit. So number is 77. Square root of 77 is 8, 8 is 64, 9, 9 is 81. So approximately 9 is the last number which can divide 77. Limit is equal to square root of this thing. We start from 2. 77 divided by 2, the remainder is 1. Okay, so i becomes 3 and we go back here. 77 divided by 3. Okay, so is it divide divisible by 3? No. Again, there is going to be a remainder. So i becomes 4. 4 is still less than or equal to 9. 77 mod 4 is equal to 0? No. So we go back here. i ends up becoming 5. Now 5 is still less than or equal to 9. 77 mod 5 is it equal to 0? No. i then increases by 1. It becomes 6. 6 is still less than or equal to 9 because I am doing it between the range 2 to 9 whereas i is still 6 so it is between 3 to 9. 77 divided by 6 is 0? No, false. We go back here. i becomes 7. 77 divided by 7. 11 into 7 is 77 so the remainder is 0. So it will say 77 is not a prime and it will come here and stop. Now if you take numbers like 2, 3. Let's say we take 2. Square root of 2 is less than 2. So it will not go in here. It will directly come here and say 2 is a prime. Similarly for 3. Square root of 3 is less than 2. It will not go in here. It will directly come and say it is prime. Suppose I say 4. Square root of 4 is 2. So starting from 2 to 2 it will go 1. 4 divided by 2 remainder happens to be 0. So it will print 4 is not a prime and come here and stop. So I hope you have got a feel of logic. It's really important to develop skills in programming logic because if anything you need to know in 11th and 12th, it's just the logic. Rest of things you will learn over a period of time. So please make an effort to practice a lot and develop the ability to understand. You cannot, I'll repeat, you cannot learn logic by learning by heart or by rote. You must make an effort to understand the logic. It is simple. You just have to develop that ability to think which has been kind of shut off because of the exam system you are used to.